Hello, Mark. I'm Esther. My student number is S zero two four one zero forty four. I am junior. Today, I'm going to read a TED talk, "Memory Banda: A Warrior's Cry Against Child Marriage." I'll begin today by sharing a poem written by my friend from the from Malawi, from the Malawi, Ilin Piri. Ilin is only thirteen years old, but when we are We were going through the collection of poetry that we wrote. I found her poem so interesting, so motivating. So I read it to you. She entitled her poem, "I'll marry when I want." Laughter. I'll marry when I want. My mother can't force me to marry. My father cannot force me to marry. My uncle, my aunt, my brother or sister cannot force me to marry. No one in the world can force me to marry. I'll marry when I want. Even if you beat me, even if you chase me away, even if you do anything bad to me, I'll marry when I want. I'll marry when I want. But not before I am well educated, and not before I am all grown up. I'll marry when I want. This poem might seem old, written by a thirteen-year-old girl. But when where I and Eileen come from, this poem, which I have just read to you, is a warrior's cry. I'm from Malawi. Malawi is one of the poorest countries. Very poor, where gender equality is questionable. Growing up is in that country. I couldn't make my own choices in life. I couldn't even explore personal opportunities in life. I will tell you a story of two different girls, two beautiful girls. These girls grew up under the same roof. They were eating the same food. Sometimes they would share clothes and even shoes, but their lives ended up differently in two different paths. The other girl in my little sister. My little sister was only eleven years old when she got pregnant. It's a hard for hurtful thing. Not only did it hurt her, even me. I was going through a hard time as well, as it is in my culture. Once you reach puberty stage, you're supposed to go to initiate. Initiation camps. In these initiation camps, you are taught how to sexually please the man. There is the special day, which they call very special day, where a man who is hired by the community comes to the camp and sleeps with the little girls. Imagine the trauma that these young girls go through every day. Most girls end up pregnant. They even contract HIV and AIDS and other sexually transmitted diseases. For my little sister, she ended up being pregnant. Today, she's only sixteen years old and she has three children. Her first marriage did not survive, nor did her second marriage. On the other side, there is this girl. She's amazing. Laughter, applause. I call her amazing because she is. She's very fabulous. That girl is me. Laughter. When I was thirteen years old, I was told, "You're grown up. You have now reached F age. You're supposed to go to the initiation camp." I was like, "What? I'm not going to go to the initiation camps." You know what the women said to me? "You're a stupid girl, stubborn. You do not respect the traditions of our society, of our community." I said no because I knew where I was going. I knew what I wanted in life. I had a lot of dreams as a young girl. I wanted to get well educated, to find a decent job in the future. I was imagining myself as the lawyer seated on the big chair. Those were the imaginations that were going through my mind every day. And I knew that one day I would contribute something, a little something to my community. But every day after refusing, women would tell me, "They got you. You're all grown up. Your little sister has a baby. How about you?" That was the music that I was hearing every day, and that is the music that girls hear every day when they don't do something that the community needs them to do. When I compared. To two stories between me and my sister, I said, "Why can't I do something? Why can't I change something that has happened for a long time in our community?" That was when I called other girls just like my sister, who have children, who have been in class, but they have forgotten how to read and write. I said, "Come on, we can remind each other how to read and read 
again, write again. How to hold the pen? How to read? To hold the book? It was a great time I had with them. Nor did I just learn a little about them, but they were able to tell me their personal stories, what they were facing every day as young mothers. That was when I was like, why can't we take all these things? That are happening to us, and present them, and tell other mothers, our traditional leaders, that these are the wrong things. It was a scary thing to do because these traditional leaders, they're already accustomed to the things they have been there for ages. A hard thing to change, but a good thing to change. So we tried. It was very hard, but we pushed. And I'm here to say that in my community, it was the first community after girls pushed so hard to our. Our traditional leader and our leader stood up for us and said, "No girl has to be married before the age of 18 plus." In my community, there was first time a community that had to call the bylaws, the first bylaws that protected girls in our community. We did not stop there. We forged ahead. We were determined to fight for girls, not just in my community, but even in other communities. When the child marriage bill was being presented in February, we were there at the Parliament House every day. When the members of Parliament were entering, we were telling them, "Would you please support the bill?" And we don't have much technique like here, but we have our small phones. And so we said, "Why can't we get their numbers and text them?" So we did that. It was a good thing. Applause. So when the bill passed, we text them back, "Thank you for supporting the bill." Laughter. And when the bill was signed by the president, making it into law, it was a plus. Now in Malawi, 18 is the illegal marriage age from 15 to 18. Applause. It's a good thing to know that the bill passed. But let me tell you this: there are countries where 18 is the legal marriage age. But don't we hear the cries of women and girls every day? Every day, girls' lives are being wasted away. This is high time for leaders to honor their commitment. In honoring this commitment, it means keeping girls' issues at heart every time. We don't have to be subject subjected a second, but they have to know that women, as we are in this room, we are not just women. Women, we are not just girls. We are extraordinary. We can do more. <clears throat> Another thing in for Malawi, and not just Malawi, but other countries, the laws which are there, you know how a law is not a law until it is enforced. The law which has just recently passed, and the laws that in other countries have been there, they need to be publicized at the local level. At a community level, where girls' issues are very striking, girls face issues, difficult issues at a community level every day. So, if these young girls know that there are laws that protect them, they will be able to stand up and to de defend themselves because they will know that there is a law that protects them. And another thing I would say is that girls' voices and women's voices are beautiful. They are there, but we cannot do this alone. Male advocates—they have to jump in, to step in, and work together. It's a collective work. What we need, what girls else we need—good education and above all, not too many. With, with list eleven. And furthermore, I know that together we can transform the legal, the cultural, and the political framework that denies girls of their rights. I'm standing here today and declaring that we can end child marriage in a generation. This is the moment where a girl and a girl and millions of girls worldwide will be able to say, "I will marry when I want." Applause. Thank you. Applause. This is the end of the recording. Thank you.